So today we're going to discuss yet another potential resolution to a relatively major mystery when it comes to the origin of life. The mystery in regards to what's known as chirality, also known as handedness. And I think this image right here explains this pretty well. In essence, pretty much everything in nature is either left-handed or right-handed. And we're not just talking about people, animals and so on, we're not really discussing macro levels as much as micro levels. Here we're talking about proteins, sugars, amino acids, and even certain molecules. And the thing is, when it comes to life, a lot of essential biological molecules can actually exist in either of two mirror image forms. They can either be left-handed or right-handed. There's actually just maybe like one or two examples where chirality is not present. But for the majority of stuff, left-handedness and right-handedness actually produces very different results. Something that can usually be measured by shining light on those molecules and then measuring the resulting polarized light, which will either be rotating left or right. And while well, here on Earth, pretty much most proteins seem to be left-handed. Okay, actually, since you're looking at me from your screen, this might appear as a right hand. But yeah, that's my left hand. Anyway, the opposite seems to be true for a lot of amino acids and sugars. Sugars, including RNA and DNA, seem to mostly contain right-handed stuff. And by itself, this phenomenon is referred to as homochirality. The unusual prevalence of certain handedness in certain things. But the obvious question is, why? And I guess the follow-up question is, how exactly did this form? Did this emerge before life, basically before the formation of even first bacteria, or is this something that developed after the life emerged and was some kind of an evolutionary process? And so here the underlying question is, do building blocks of life require this chirality to function, and more importantly, does life need to be homochiral in order to be successful? Or is this something that seems to be just common here on planet Earth? And intriguingly, this unusual concept has actually been known for a very long time. Originally, it was discovered by the famous Louis Pasteur, who discovered this phenomena in the mid-19th century by studying various crystals. And back then, he even proposed a possibility of maybe some kind of a mirror life, where essentially all of the proteins and all of the sugars would be completely reflected. Naturally, nothing like this has ever been discovered, but hypothetically, it could exist somewhere out there, on maybe some other world. But this phenomenon by itself is not just super intriguing, it's also very important for a lot of modern medical fields. For example, we know that a lot of complex proteins and a lot of complex molecules, when just created, will usually exist in equal amounts both left-handed and right-handed. Here's one of the most famous examples, usually used in various labs or in various classrooms, just to make this point. This is an extract of limonene, in this case taken from various orange peels. But limonene exists in both left-handed and right-handed forms and can technically be found in both of these forms in different types of environments. So interestingly, in its right-handed form, it seems to basically taste like citrus. So think orange and lemon. Whereas in the left-handed form, it tastes like pine. So basically here we have the same molecule producing somewhat different results. But this idea can actually obviously get a little bit more dangerous. Specifically with drugs. Here's the image of two forms of thalidomide, a drug that in left-handed form seems to be able to cure morning sickness. It's usually given to a lot of pregnant women. But in its right-handed form, is actually somewhat dangerous and can lead to various birth defects. Something you can read more about in the article below. This is a really sad story, so honestly, I think I'm just not ready to cover this in this video. The point is that the chirality in this case plays a relatively big role in determining the overall function. But trying to explain why has been actually a challenge for the past few decades. And we've actually tackled this topic before in one of the previous videos you can find in the description, and there the scientists actually thought that maybe it's because of various cosmic rays and a lot of different polarity that seems to be coming from a lot of regions of outer space. Now, that particular hypothesis would be somewhat difficult to prove unless we actually find some other life somewhere out there. But all in all, in the last few years, there's actually been quite a lot of attempts to try to explain this using all sorts of different sciences. For example, geology and minerals that could have actually influenced chirality early on, or even bizarre quantum effects involving electrons that might have basically shifted certain molecules to be left-handed versus right-handed. But despite many explanations, all of them are still very, very hypothetical and don't actually have a lot of evidence behind them. But the explanation we're going to be tackling today 
does actually have evidence and is somewhat intriguing. And the study behind this can be found in the description below. And well, interestingly, like before, this was actually a completely accidental discovery. Here the scientists were not looking for answers to chirality or even to the origins of life. They were actually working with cell membranes and were conducting experiments with bacteria and archaea. If you're not familiar, bacteria and archaea are not really the same and archaea seem to possess a lot of really ancient mechanisms that potentially existed on the planet for billions of years. And specifically, they were actually trying to create large concentrations of cell membranes by combining a lot of phospholipids, but in this case mixing the ones from archaea with the ones from bacteria. Mostly because they're not actually the same and contain somewhat different properties, with the main focus of their study being permeability, or how likely some things were to pass through the membrane if they were essentially coming from archaea, bacteria, or if they were mixed. And that's because for a very long time, scientists have known that a lot of different types of sugars and amino acids can usually pass through various cell membranes relatively easily, but not all, and there are always some exceptions. And so here they were trying to discover some of these exceptions just to see how all of this works, because a lot of this is important in developing various drugs and various antibiotics. And so almost right away they started to discover that there is a bit of a difference in terms of permeability. And specifically, they actually discovered that archaea membranes, or the ones that were mixed or basically were hybrids, consisting of both bacterial and archaea phospholipids, were definitely much more permeable to right-handed forms of specific sugars, such as the ones responsible for DNA and RNA, whereas the pure bacterial membranes were not. And so in other words, depending on the kind of a membrane, it seemed to let through certain right-handed molecules a lot more frequently. Suggesting that some of these membranes, especially the ones that are really ancient, from archaea, were acting as a kind of a sieve, filtering certain chiral forms of certain sugars and preventing other ones from passing. And this of course implies that if this was actually the case billions of years ago, during the evolution of early life and the transition from archaea to bacteria, they might have actually encouraged right-handedness in various sugars, which would then lead to left-handedness in a lot of different proteins as well. In other words, in this case, phospholipid bilayer and the membrane of various bacteria and archaea potentially played a major role in forcing chirality on future life. And though obviously this is still just a hypothesis, in this case this is definitely something more tangible with actual evidence, and it also reveals a potential route for why left-handed amino acids and right-handed sugars became prominent in a lot of modern life. But there is still maybe at least one issue. In a lot of cases, phospholipids are also actually chiral. And so here one explanation might suggest that left-handed membranes would basically just allow left-handed molecules. But to resolve this particular problem, researchers actually confirmed observing both left-handed and right-handed sugars interacting equally independent of the chirality of the membrane. So in this case, the scientists behind the study don't believe this to be a problem. But nevertheless, a lot of scientists and a lot of biologists still think that maybe this is just a coincidence. And so basically they don't actually think that this filtering or permeability played a role in developing chirality in a lot of modern life. But naturally, because this is still just a very early proposition, and even the study itself has not been peer-reviewed, we're most likely not going to be hearing more about this for at least a few months. A lot of this still has to be reviewed, and additional experiments have to be conducted by other scientists in order to determine if maybe this is a coincidence after all, or if maybe the scientists behind this paper discovered a potential resolution to one of the oldest problems when it comes to origins of life. The reasons for a very specific homochirality in pretty much everything inside of our bodies. And so until future discoveries or until some clarifications, that's I guess pretty much everything I wanted to mention. Check out previous videos in the description below, all of the studies and all of the relevant links should be in there as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.